Good morning. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Anthony the Abbot. He is also called St. Anthony of Egypt. He also has one more name, Anthony the father of monasticism. He was born in the year 251, a very tough time, so much of persecution. He was drawn by the words from Mark's Gospel, which says, go and sell what you have and give it to the poor. He comes from a wealthy family. When his parents died at the age of 20, he literally sold everything, gave it to the poor, went and lived in caves for the next 12 years, all by himself. And then many people got attracted to him. And then he was the first one to start a monastery. And then one more, so when monasticism was increasing, many more young men were being attracted to come and pray. And he also fought against Arian heresy. He lived a long life. At the age of 105, he died. So today, as we celebrate this saint who is totally dedicated his life to be in union with God in prayer. Let's ask him to intercede for us that our own prayer life might be strong, that our union with God could be strong. And now we shall read the entrance antiphon for the Mass. The just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar planted in the house of the Lord in the courts of the house of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Let's ask God to forgive our sins and to make us worthy to celebrate this Eucharist. I confess in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Of the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, who brought the abbot St. Anthony to serve you by a wondrous way of life in the desert, grant through his intercessions that denying ourselves, we may always love you above all things. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Samuel, the first book of Samuel. Samuel said to Saul, Stop. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Samuel said, Speak. Samuel then said, Though little in your own esteem, are you not a leader of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king of Israel and sent you on a mission, saying, Go and put the sinful Amalite Amalekites under a band of destruction. Fight against them until you have exterminated them. Why then have you disobeyed the Lord? You have pounced on the spoil, thus displeasing the Lord. Samuel answered, Saul answered Samuel, I did indeed obey the Lord and fulfill the mission on which the Lord sent me. I have brought back Agog, and I have destructed Amalekite. 
under the ban. But from the spoil, the men took sheep and oxen, the best of what was the best of what had been banned to sacrifice to the Lord their God in Gilgal. But Samuel said, Does the Lord so delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience to the command of the Lord? Obedience is better than sacrifice and submission than the fat of rams. For a sin like divination is rebellion and presumption is the crime of idolatry. Because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he too has rejected you as ruler. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your fold. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? To the upright I will show the saving power of God. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise and as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The word of God is living and effective, able to discern reflections and the thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, Alleluia. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The disciples of John and the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to Jesus and objected, why do the disciples of John and the disciples of Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guest fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old clock. If he does, its fullness pulls away, and the new and the old, and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skin. Both the wine and the skin are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into the fresh wine skins. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Fasting is very much part of every culture and every religion. I don't think there's any religion where people don't fast. We have different days and different reasons. 
So it was true even during the time of Jesus. There were three important things every religious person would be expected to practice in his life. The first thing is prayer. Prayer is your communication to God. We don't see God. We cannot talk to God as we talk to other people, person to person. But we talk or we, we unite ourselves to God in prayer. That we see even in the life of Jesus, how he always found some time to talk to his father. Prayer is very important. As we are connected to others, we need to be connected to God in prayer. And the second important thing that people expect to do is almsgiving. Prayer is for God. Almsgiving is what you do for someone else. To your brothers and sisters, especially those who are in need. It's not just money. It could be your time, your talent. Whatever you spend for someone else. Your connection with God should help us to reach out to our brothers, which is almsgiving, which every Jew is expected to do. And the third one is today's gospel reading, fasting. Fasting has two aspects. Why do we fast? There are many people these days, they fast because for the good health or to lose some weight and things like that. But fasting has a very deeper meaning also. When you fast, when you skip a meal or two or three a day, then we would be reminded of the giver of all the blessings in our life. Every day I go, I have on the table what I need. I don't think of the giver of all these blessings. But when I'm in hungry, when I'm in hunger, when I'm fasting, I long for food. I long something to eat. That reminds me that all that I eat, all that I have, is what God has given. We don't bring anything when we come to this earth. It was already in this earth which God created. Whatever you eat, either bread or rice or meat, it's God who gave me. In hunger, we realize the giver of food. That's the one aspect. And the second aspect, only when we are hungry, we realize what it means to be hungry. We'll be more sympathetic to give it to people who, are, who, who have nothing else in life. So fasting kind of brings God and neighbor into one place. To thank God for what I have, at the same time, to think of my brothers and sisters who do not have what I have today. We could say a prayer for all, the, for all those people who have nothing to eat today. If possible, we can also share what we have. That's what Mother Teresa, and oftentimes, when people co come to her with lots of gift, she would say, thank God that God has blessed you. First, thank God, and then, I'll take this one to give it to the people who do not have any. So dear brothers and sisters, let's be always thankful to God for whatever we have. We didn't bring anything. Everything that we have today is what God has given to us. And we are not going to take anything with us when we go. We need to share it with someone else who is in more need than what we are. We shall all stand and pray for our needs. <coughs> that the church may continue to be standard bearer of love and compassion for all people who are in need. We pray to the Lord. That God's gracious mercy may allow the world to become more peaceful and loving for all who dwell in it. We pray to the Lord. <laughs> that all who are hungry may be fed physically and spiritually through the work of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. That the families in our faith community may be grounded in the love of Christ and strengthened by the Holy Spirit. 
we pray to the Lord. That our beloved dead may share in the heavenly banquet with all the angels and saints. We pray to the Lord. And for what else shall we pray now? Lord, hear our prayer. 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 We shall pray for Muhammad Faisal Khan, for whose intention this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray. Loving Father, you make all things new. We humbly pray that you hear the prayers of your church and grant them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. As we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord, our God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings of our service placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Anthony be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and grant that release from earthly attachments we may have our riches in you alone, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you are praised in the company of saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By the way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercessions, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory. And so with the angels and archangels, with the great multitude of saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim, Holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be all, always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with her will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
communion antiphon. If you would be perfect, go sell what you have, give to the poor, then follow me, says the Lord. Let us pray. Nourished by your healing, by your sacraments, O Lord, may we escape every snare of the enemy unharmed, just as by your grace and Anthony won glorious victories over the powers of darkness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. We shall go in peace. Pray to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of devil. And do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. <laughs>